is your guys like wholesome family friendly thing that's like an act so that yeah, was I'm weird like, no. i'm 11 what do you think like i get saying that <laughs> yeah like I get the good girl get ready it's time christina Catherine, lisa amy and lauren welcome to the cimarelli podcast Hey, I'm Christina. I'm Amy. I'm Lauren. And And we're we're Cimarelli. Welcome back to the Cimarelli Podcast. Podcast. Hello, people. Oh, Oh my gosh. gosh. Oh, my (laughs) gosh. Dude, my therapist wants to me that's a tick. I don't know how. Burping? It's not burping. It's hiccuping. Wait, what? I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. A singular hiccup? It, I don't know. We'll have to t- talk it's really about it interesting. later. really um, interesting. Welcome back to the Simmerly Podcast. Um, yeah. The Powerpuff Girls are here, a.k.a. us three, because... Wigs and wigs. Just kidding. Because um, Lisa couldn't shoot today, but she's coming next week. I don't know if we'll do a podcast with her next week, but she's coming in next week. But Kath is on maternity leave. I keep having to fix this because it keeps falling. Maybe I'm not strong. Probably enough. because it's... I'm too doing my best. All right, keep going. Mm. Keep going. Keep anyway. Going. Keep going. Um... Yeah, so that's like the tea. Welcome back to episode three, two, two, two oh eight. I don't know why I think it's three. It's two. It's two oh eight. I don't know why you episodes. welcome them back like to this episode. Times. Eight is my favorite number. Is that your favorite number? I, I like it. But I think because it was your favorite number, it oh. influenced me as a child, okay. and I was like, oh. I don't. But also like August it's birthday. My favorite number. I really don't believe in favorite numbers. Oh I just think gosh. numbers are numbers, and a person's birth no matter how small. I just don't. I've never looked at a number and been like, wow, that's such a cool number. And it's really? like an octave. No. I like like seven is a nice number. Um, oh no. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I just don't. Okay. It's just not my vibe. Tm. I'm not a numerology. Okay, okay, whatever. Anyway. anyway. So, what is today's episode? <laughs> today's episode is, is entitled something along the lines of Dare to be cringe, how to be confident being yourself. Right? Yeah. 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 Something like that. We, if anyone we can talk We have a long history of being cringe. If anyone can talk about being cringe, it's, it's us. us. Especially me because I'm the captain of the ship. You are you true are cringe okay. lord. <laughs> I'm the captain of this ship, and I'm proud of it. Prolifically yeah. cringy. I am prolifically you are. cringy throughout the internet. And yeah. it's great. We love it. And I own it, okay? <laughs> or else, I don't know. We're self-aware cringe. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking what percent self-aware. I would say, I'm trying to think. Okay, here's how I can actually accurately <laughs> assess this. Based on things we've done that we have gotten real feedback on, that was cringe. We don't just do stuff and no one will tell us. Like, we will know. <laughs> yeah, we're we'll not able to tell us. In your, in your normal life, you might not know because people might not tell you. We yeah. will be told. Yeah. I would say 90% or more of the things people tell me are cringe that we did. I'm like, yeah, I knew yeah. that. Or I knew you well, would think or, that. Yeah, yeah. Some people just think a lot a of things are cringe. It's like, was it really that? Yeah. Especially with Gen Z, I think they think literally everything is cringe. But yeah, we yeah. know that they think that. Some there's yeah. like there's um self aware cringe and then there's not self aware cringe. Yes, we, but we're so self aware. We promise. We, we are self aware <laughs> cringe where we would plan it and know that things would we would we would go in okay we would go into something knowing that people would cringe at it and be like all right we're doing this yeah which is that that takes but some courage I, I don't think that was how it was at first though we didn't know that but then we learned of, what did we start with what was the first what was people the first? thought part of you say was cringe yeah i didn't think that was cringe I didn't but think i was, it was also cringe. 10 we were just there singing Hmm, what is that? Or like our like all of our old videos be like, oh my god, it's a grunge. And I was like, I oh. think it'd be like we're trying to be funny. Right? <laughs> or we just have personalities. I think the worst thing is when you're trying to be serious and it's cringe. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm aware that a lot of times when we do serious stuff, it is <clears throat> cringe but our intention is not to be cringe but we know that it will be cringe does that make sense i don't know yeah okay here's an example i don't know if i get on board with this narrative yet beautiful things cover that's cringe to people yeah you know that yeah were you trying to be funny no i was not personally that is cringy to people some people 
but I and I know that yeah, going like, in. Yeah, like why are you so over the top? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cringe. so we could have dialed like I could have been like m- a lot more chill with my performance in that because I didn't want people to say I was cringe. But then I wouldn't be being cringe. me. So that's basically what we're gonna talk about today. If I dialed that back to not get cringe comments, um, <sighs> we wouldn't have a career, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yeah. I would be altering. Vera to fit you. <laughs> I, would be, I would be altering my personality. But I don't really think there's anybody that doesn't get cringe. I mean, that's what we're going to talk Guys, about. Guys, I have to say something unfortunate. Oh, no, that Okay, you remember in our You're Worth It video where there's that dialogue in the beginning, no, monologue at the beginning, oh, where it's yeah. like, if I lose the weight, would I be I good mean, enough? Yeah. Yeah. That has become a joke in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? You just said, like, <laughs> you're like, well, if I didn't do that, like, I wouldn't be me. And I'm like, if I lose the weight, would I be good? I'm dead. Wait, what? Oh, on but it keeps Earth. coming up as that a joke to me. Yeah. I'm like, that's not a good joke, but it is to me. Okay, that's pretty wild. Listen. Wrong. I think I have too many inside jokes with myself that you know that no one else knows. Wait, I don't have any inside jokes myself. Really? <laughs> Maybe you need to get some. They're fun. I feel like I have to say them to someone. They're not with myself anymore. Yeah. <sighs> but it's okay. like... Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go to our highs and lows. That's what we're going to talk about today. Guys. Yeah. All right, let's do a speed round because I don't want to go through highs I mean, highs and lows are kind of like, yeah, they're okay, fun. Okay, negativity. Like, okay. Boring. My high was that last night I had so People low. care about our lives. Sorry, you don't. I know. But I'm other people what I did do. this week and I can't think. Okay, well, maybe she has something interesting. So last interesting. night after a long day, I had time to relax. Wow. <laughs> and it was great. That was a high because I had such a fun time laying on the couch watching Hawaii 5 It was great. It was so fun. <laughs> I forgot to inform you that I kept thinking, he is so hot. I like him a lot. Wait, when, when did you sing that? <laughs> All right, guys, you want to know what this is? <laughs> he I knew is you so <laughs> hot. This I like him a lot. lot. Actually, I love him. I love him. You know it's true. I've fallen for him. He's got the perfect voice and the perfect face. Okay, that's my I love his personality. <laughs> Ooh, more than I can say. Too bad he's 18. Ooh. <laughs> Somebody save me from this disaster. Okay, that was written by a 12-year-old. Not yeah. me. It was not me. But so basically, well, yeah. our friend <laughs> was like, can you make this into a song? And I was like, okay. So now I like recorded it and made it a song for her. And that was the song. <laughs> not and then too bad he's 18. Didn't you play it for him? At, like, at the cast party in front public? Of <laughs> that is so crazy. <laughs> Like, no, she wanted to play it. She, she was 12. To. Like, she was 12 and she had a crush on an 18 year old. He gave like, her a hug. Like a child hug. <laughs> yeah, he's okay, like, okay. <laughs> that That's is too so good. Unhinged. But every day. And his girlfriend was like, oh. oh I'm trying to think. That's I that's mean, insane. No, it is too bad he's 18. <laughs> <laughs> oh Not too God. bad he has a girlfriend. Just too, too bad, bad he's 18. Because, like, <laughs> When you're 12, ah. that's really old. Anyway, anyway, side note, you were seeing that when and why? When she was watching <laughs> well, Hawaii 5 no, no, she's only like, that he line. is so he hot. He is so hot. hot. I like him a lot. Chris <laughs> kept singing. <laughs> he is so hot. And then I, like I texted him a lot. the lyrics in our group chat. You never replied. Actually, Everyone else replied to the lyrics. I haven't didn't. replied to like anything. And this you're week. the one that wrote them. How dare you? Anyway, oh, you're like, I'm week. not on my I'm phone. I'm not available. I'm reading. I'm in nature. I was not. I yeah. wish I was reading. I was so not. that was my high. I was not in and nature. And then my <laughs> low was a certain social situation where I was in over the weekend. That was just <laughs> weird. It mm-hmm. was just like one of those vibes where it's just like one of those vibes. Where yeah. it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like, like raise your hand not, <laughs> if you were scared. Yeah. You're not like with them a lot, that type of person. And they all just kind of like the same thing and you just don't feel that vibe. It's hard to explain without like being rude. So that's like okay the tea, you know, but not tea. But it was just like really funny though because Lauren was there. 
<laughs> and watching Lauren squirm in social situations is so funny because no one else knows that she's squirming. Oh. But I can see it in her eyes. The fear. <laughs> it's too good. It's like, slay. <laughs> That's how I taste of you. Slay. <laughs> okay. That is. Cool. Yeah. I can't um, think of one. He is so hot. Okay, let me try and think. My low was that on Sunday, I was so burnt out. I literally laid in my bed all day. I took a morning nap. I took an afternoon nap. I forced myself. I peeled myself off of my bed to go to church. And that was it. And I just laid there all day. But it was not like, wow, so relaxing. It was like... It was like, help, I fall. I can't get it. Yeah, it was like in the grave. Um, I don't love that. Like I, I would rather like, you know, relax because it's like fun. Yeah. Not like because I will die if I move one muscle. You know. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. My other low is I don't have food right now. It's really bad. I have one meal, but I won't go to the grocery store do because then I have to think. No, I know, but then I have to think too much to do it and i just don't have that capacity just go and pick up a few freezer meals so then i love I, how <laughs> instagram has like buy again so i just go to my buy again section i just add everything that i already bought i, and I never have to think about what i'm getting every week yeah. i will say i never used, used instacart in my entire i just life. reorder the one from last week i already even I planned the same thing i already even planned what i need to get Tell me why I won't order it. I oh, don't know. I need yeah. to just do it. I'm going to do it because that's I wild. need food. I can't keep oh, I know getting random lows. food. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> I only said two lows so far. Two wow. lows? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 okay, give us a I don't know what my high is. You go and then I'll think. <laughs> okay, my lows this morning when I had to get a blood test because I couldn't eat and Ew. I was so mad. Oh, uh, I was so, I woke up and I was like, ah. Hey, you came back and Barrett's like, did they and, take all your blood? Yeah, I said, Barrett said, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm going to, they're going to take some of my blood out. And then he said, are they going to give it back to you? <gasps> I was like, no. And he's like, why? And then I came home and he said, so you don't have any blood in you anymore? No. <laughs> and I was trying to explain it, but, you know. And I was like, do you want to see where I was? He's like, no, no. <laughs> okay, so I thought cool. of my high, actually, was watching children. Not watching children. Watching their children. <laughs> <laughs> watching their children i really this is what i realized about me i love like playing games with kids like i feel like older people don't really like to do that like they'll just stand and supervise while the kid plays but i like like playing with cars doing the imaginary games like all of that kid stuff i feel like is actually fun and like watching the twins and just like doing their random games with them or playing with Barrett and just doing that. I feel like it's like my inner child and I'm like, oh, this is fun. I love so that. So I actually that enjoyed that. I don't know what the high of my week was. Well, every storm runs out of rain. Maybe it was Literally. actually recording. Oh, oh. That's yeah. my other high. It was recording because I was recording some really good stuff. Yeah, same. I wrote a new good chorus. Ooh. I think. Ooh. <sighs> At least I, I think. Have... <laughs> I don't know. It might be too dumb. No, it's probably good. Or kind Every of like time you say that, know. that's good. Every time you say it's so dumb and bad and embarrassing, it's always good. Okay, well, don't get that excited. You literally do this every time. Okay. This is the same uh, convo every time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Click. Okay. So, so it means anyway. nothing to me. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I think I wrote something. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Love Cute. that for you. I was like, is this too pathetic? That means I've it's good. I love before. patheticism. I've never written a song. <laughs> what does that mean? I've never you? written a song before and been like, is this too pathetic? Like, no, no, that means it's Until vulnerable. Week, like, that means it's real. Ugh. <sighs> Yeah, I I know yeah, that so feeling. I was like, I don't know if this will see the light of day. Wait, pathetic in which way? I think it's too way? pathetic for I'm my confused. image. In what? I'm okay. confused. I would like to hear it. Personally. Patheticism. Yeah, it's not really my <laughs> brand. But I don't, maybe I don't really it like should. It. Maybe it should. No, be. it felt it felt really weird. I was like, okay, this is I'll weird. take it. I'll do it. Yeah, Lauren will be the ghostwriter. So take the card. <laughs> and it was kind of cool because it was kind of like um, it's guitar driven, and yeah. it like picks up, and the first chorus <laughs> is like. 
Ah, really high head voice. Ooh. Ooh. And, then, and then the ends picking up and like screaming all the lyrics. Ooh. Not screaming. I love that. I think that sounds it's cool. Not, so we'll see. I don't know. Too pathetic for me. It may never see the light of day. I don't know if I can if I can bear. Maybe I'll just rewrite some of the lyrics. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. It's too pathetic. Oh my god. You but can. it's good, but it was a really good melody. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, it's like if there's like maybe there's one or two changes you I can make trying, that are like I was trying to record our cover and then I was like, I have so many emotions, I can't do this. Or I just felt like this block. I was like, I don't want to sit here and do all this. And I was like, I feel like I just need to get something out. And I didn't really know what. Ooh. So I just started singing and then I was like, <laughs> Love that. Like, hmm, that's, that's it's sad. always not what you think yeah that comes out yeah I was you're like, like what wait gonna... what yeah just say that it is your alter ego it's not yeah, really like you Shasha how Pierce. you felt there you go <laughs> it's like you're like conjecturing on how well, some people like, might this is feel me being we'll never sometime. know what song this was so i'll never say i'll just be like here's a song that i wrote yeah from some something about oh. my friend i won't say it was this song. about her yeah okay she wrote it about someone okay, else. Okay, moving on. Anyway, <laughs> let's okay, get into it. Okay, before we get it. into it, if you want to see every full Summer Night podcast episode, you got to join Patreon. Our Patreon. We have every episode there. We have all our past. We've done like these this series called Things We Don't Talk About. That we was did a good one. Sister Sis, Sister Story Time. Story something we rather. We did Game Night. We did so many things. We did a bunch of really good stuff in there. Lisa has all her wacky Wednesdays. Oh, and um. What else do you get? There's a birthday club one where we sing Happy Birthday to You in a video. You get special birthday merch. We do Q and A's where we answer oh. your personal questions. We do a, uh, a... Exclusive live stream. Tell me, I almost said a birth giveaway. <laughs> That's not it. That wasn't even close to what I was going to say. Uh, we do a merch, merch giveaway, giveaway every, every month. month. Yeah. Similarly, merch giveaway every month. That's a new thing we just started. Oh my gosh, you guys. It's so exciting. So anyway, if you want to join that, patreon.com slash summerly. It's $5 a month. You get all the episodes of the podcast and all the other stuff. And the merch giveaway, you get to be into that no matter which tier you're in. It's so cool. So join that. And it's a really great way to support us. And we appreciate you guys so much. We love our patrons. We do. We and do. you need to be part of Lauren's take. All right. So let's jump in. Let's jump in. Okay. okay. So I feel like I can introduce it. They actually wrote most of the... Um, the, the bullet points. So maybe you guys can like lead that. So all the all of the intro and then you guys okay. lead. Okay. I've never spoken in my life. Okay, so <laughs> here's what I wanna say. I was um helping a, a friend. Not uh sure. Was it friend. you? No. Oh. <laughs> with her social media. I wasn't Someone helping myself. Help. <laughs> with her social media because she's like has like a business on there. And mm -hmm. I was telling her you have to dare to be cringe to like you really have to put yourself out there making these reels because that's what she needs to do for her specific thing and i was saying how that's one of the most important things for our success um i think it's one of the most important things for our success in in plenty of things and also happiness in life and being the chance at being like the most authentic version of you that you can be like not the mm -hmm. fake one like there's a fake version of me i'm not really that often but where i don't say normal i say normal yeah and i don't say like what the rip i just say like what, what? the heck what the heck and i kind of stopped yeah and i don't say what the heck <laughs> i kind of stopped doing that and just tried doing the weird stuff around people which is the dare to be cringe um because i'm and trying not better. to be yeah i'm trying not to be do the, the british accent yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. No, I'm not doing the British accent. So her Baird always says, "I need to wash my hands." And <laughs> you I don't do know why. though. You do random wash words like that. Oh, wait, you gotta right. try it on literally. It's the best. It's so good. Uh, <laughs> <I love okay>. <laughs> <laughs> and I started doing that in public on accident, but it's too fun. It is too fun. Anyway, a lot of happiness and joy is on the other side of cringe. I'm saying literally. So true. Let me tell you why. Because people think lots of things are cringe that are, well, cringe is subjective, okay? True. So people, a lot of people think like trying is cringe. A lot of people think yeah. singing out loud is cringe. Or like <laughs> recording, cringe. recording a song mm -hmm. and letting someone hear it is cringe. Like there's, yeah. there's so many people I know who sing and they don't want anyone to hear it because they cringe at it. But they have beautiful voices or whatever mm -hmm. it is or playing an instrument or whatever it is or like there's plenty of things that people don't want to like put out there because it's too cringe for them and i really think they're missing out i yep. also think that the word cringe is kind of uh it's like uh, another word for the feeling of like vulnerability it's like, it's like ah. dare to be vulnerable well sometimes Show it's up, not be seen 
Sometimes it is. And then sometimes someone does something really weird that makes you feel uncomfortable and not necessarily because it was vulnerable, just maybe because it was like, like trying too hard almost at something. Actually, yeah. You're just weird. Sometimes you cringe when someone's being authentic. Sometimes you really cringe when someone's being really mm. inauthentic. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like they're really trying too hard to be something they're absolutely not. I'm and saying it makes you the cringe. feelings that you are describing but are we're more saying, around vulnerability. Yes. So what's the first thing you said? Miss America? Yes. Read it to us. <laughs> I'm exposing oh, wait, wait, wait. their outline for our episode. Okay, it wow. was just like bullet points. They or... wrote this and I wasn't around. <laughs> so then I have to read it and like see what we're talking about. And it's like... Drop the idea that you are Miss United States. Yes! You are a human who will always have flaws. Rebrand yourself as human and not an object. LMHO. Who are LMHO? <laughs> Me! I love it. I've been trying to make LMHO happen. LMHO exactly. is so good. I've really tried. And, and I say that when I say LMHO, people don't think that I'm saying it very, like, jokingly in a way. It's like part joke, part not joke. Yeah. yeah. It's like LMHO. No one gets it. And it's like, you're like it's LMHO funny. with the rest. T-T-Y-L. You know, like, like yes. they think, ugh, they don't get it. Yeah. yeah. They don't know. They don't know Bella Thorne. Okay. Me. But my point with that was okay and i don't think everyone feels this way though but i feel like there's two camps it's like you either think that you are miss america and you have to be like this flawless perfect person or you've kind of like shunned that and you're like whatever i'm like the screw up person i think i'm miss america miss america miss america miss america America. so i'm speaking to the miss americas of the world because that's what i think that i am and you are not is the thing it's like you don't have to be like the royal family and like everything i do is received so well by everyone and everyone has to see me like with the utmost respect like it's hard for me to explain this because i feel like until you like see it you don't really see it when you're stuck in this but like because Maybe it's you like guys can help me out here because on, like a pageant I'm, show. Well, no, in no, a no. Way. I didn't say it yet. Okay, because <laughs> I didn't say the part yet. <laughs> ah, true. Because I'm like, it doesn't sound that groundbreaking, but when like you actually understand this, like you don't have to be well received all the time and yes. it's it's fine like that it's actually hard. fine that's a hard pill to that's swallow. really like, hard and it's like i feel that way like with you guys like my older sisters where i'm like oh i don't want you guys to think that like i was dumb or wrong or like made Same. the wrong choice like especially you <laughs> as my mom 2.0 i'm like oh like if you are like oh why'd you do that i'm like oh no she thinks i shouldn't have done something but it's like that's okay if you think that i did something that you're like maybe shouldn't have done that and that's okay if like people disagree with what you do it's like does that mean that you hate me no does it mean that you don't like respect me anymore as a person no and i feel like for me that's the biggest thing is like it's this idea that like i have to have like everyone's respect all the time and if they see me as like a flawed person i won't be respected anymore Mm. but that's not true and it's like also this idea that oh i could get to this place where Where i could where i do everything right and i know everything but that is actually not real and it's like Even though it's like, yeah, I see myself growing as time goes by and I'm sure I will get smarter (laughs) with time and, you know, do things better. But like, you're always going to be like chaotic and like messy and like wrong and dumb and make wrong choices your whole life. You never like get over that. Like, yeah, you can do better in certain ways and learn things, but you're never gonna be at a point where you don't make mistakes. Like it's actually not real. And I truly believed that I could. And it's like, I wouldn't say that because logically I'm like, that sounds unhinged, but I truly believed that in my heart. I think I still always, I, I still, have to fight that believing that and then reminding yes. myself that we don't believe that anymore yes. and i think Brene brown talks about this where you like have to like find you have to like identify who are the people who you actually care about um what they think mm-hmm. and you like want their opinion and you you like respect their 
feedback and their opinion. And then you have to remind yourself, oh, like, oh, I actually don't need that person at the grocery stores. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Validation. Approval? Validation or approval, which you will think sometimes. Like, there's so many times I'm, like, out with my kids and then I'm, like, oh, that I want. Like, I'm not thinking this, but I realize what I'm thinking is I want that person to think this good, something good about yeah. me. And then I'm like, you don't need them to think anything about you. I say that a lot of times because with yeah. kids, it can be like, oh, no, they're going to think that I'm this like horrible mother because of mm-hmm. this or that. Mm. And then I'm like, that's OK. Or like you have toddlers, whatever. So I think that a lot of times I've kept to keep reminding myself, like, we don't think that anymore. We can't um, try to make everyone approve of us or whatever or respect for me it's like respect yeah i want everyone to respect me truth yeah not everyone's going oh especially with the internet and also it's like you're not all gonna be able in life in all situations to be number one best decision maker best whatever maker sometimes you just can't sometimes you're just most times you probably aren't number one best and i think that that's another thing is like letting ourselves down a lot of like yeah and that's kind of yeah what i was saying with the rebranding in your own mind of like what's the rebrand the rebrand yeah it's like i it's like dropping the miss america and rebranding as an actual human person which is not this Miss Miss America, America. a human person does not always do the right thing, the perfect choice, and like- Have the rehearsed answer ready. Yeah, that's just not real. And I feel like it's so hard to let go of that because it's like, but that's why people care about me. That's why I have, like, that's what I have to offer is being this like, thing that people like look up to or this Mm. thing that people like like but it's like you like you don't have to be like perfectly liked to be loved yeah and that is the difference i think that's really what it is is the difference between trying to be liked by everyone and then realizing like you're actually still loved by people when you're not like liked for everything you do because you need to be loved by well to be loved it's by people who know you yeah and if you're trying to be liked by everyone people won't actually get to know you and people won't like truly deeply love you if they don't know you and then you're like robbing yourself of that Yeah, and I think that's another thing in me realizing, like, (coughs) that I see myself in this way. It's, like, I see other people that way, too, of, like, oh, other people are Miss America and this perfect thing. And if they see, like, this bad thing about me or, like, oh, I did this dumb thing or this wrong thing, then it's, like, oh, they won't care about me anymore or they won't like me anymore. They won't love me anymore. But it's, like, we all are the same thing. There's so many like truly <laughs> there's so many moms that I do that with now. I feel like I didn't yeah. do that very much before, um, like comparing myself as much before. And after becoming a mom, I do it so much now. I'm like, oh, that mom, she gets up and she gets up at five every day and does this thing, whatever. And I'm like, oh, that mom, she mm-hmm. like fully gets dressed and does her hair and makeup every day. Not that I actually want, I actually don't want to do that. But but I'm still like, how is she able to do that? And I'm not able to do that. And then I'm like that mom her kid was sitting there in church and whatever and i literally think these things all the time but then it's been cool because then i'll see someone post something and actually talk about how like the thing that they were presenting like didn't actually go that way but i don't like it's crazy how many times i'm like wow i bet she never she never does this she never does that and it's that's not like what's wrong with me how come i have all these flaws and they don't yeah but you can think that because when you see yourself in this one dimensional way you see other people that way too literally but to see ourselves and everyone as like the full person that everyone is like even people that present this like perfect image nobody escapes the human condition like nobody we are all the same yes literally and also i feel like that is something that rears its head in dating a lot strangely of Mm -hmm. like feeling like you have to be perfect so you have to find the perfect 
person yeah and like i have had it told to me that i didn't want to see people's flaws <laughs> because i didn't oh. hey what do you mean because i knew that if i knew they had a flaw i had to be the perfect person and cut them off immediately and never speak to them again oh and then i yeah. had to find this perfect person as well to date that was perfect and socially acceptable and will win the pageant too. i'm curious mm -hmm. how this goes with attachment styles you guys need thank goodness they're becoming more popular now but yeah as dismissives versus i'm fearful avoidant what nothing um, <laughs> well, i have like the opposite of that which i think is interesting really yeah i saw this thing and i was trying to find the equivalent for dismissive because nick's dismissive so i really was trying to learn that but i couldn't okay. find it yet and it was saying like fearful avoidance are like really um pursuing like being deeply 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 known for like all we want to be like all of our flaws and everything bad about us every unique thing about us to be like seen and known mm. so that we can actually be loved for that so i would be like trying to put out what are my worst qualities like pretty early on yeah i feel like i do that i'm like now. i need you to know and right when i met nick i told him like right away like right away i was like here's like the worst things about me so instead of being like, here are the best things, I was like, I really want you to know everything that's really bad about me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a little confusing. Yeah? Like, kind of going to the next one that you guys wrote, which is know your flaws. Oh, know your yes. Flaws. Know okay. your flaws. Be aware and accept them. Yeah. I feel like I, okay, this is <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> when I first started seeing the therapist I'm seeing now like two years ago it's like I've always seen myself as pretty like confident person like I put myself out there and like I do a lot of things that like other people maybe wouldn't do or say because they're too scared to but I'll like put myself out there and like okay like I have pretty like good self-esteem I think I'm pretty confident and she was like, yeah, you have really low self-esteem. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, but in, like, realizing that and really, like, seeing, like, <laughs> it's almost like the more I, like, see my flaws and see my issues, the more comfortable I am with, like, having them and putting myself out there in general because i'm like it's not like oh i have all this stuff like locked in the basement and i'm like oh if somebody pointed that out or like said something that like triggered that it's like <gasps> it would be so disturbing and shocking and no one can know that it's like mm. i already know that about me it's like the more that i know myself and can just accept like the bad parts, the less afraid I am of somebody like seeing that or like criticizing it because I'm either yeah. just like, like if somebody gives me a critic criticism, I'm either like, that's not really true because I know myself well enough to know that. Or I'm like, yeah, that is true. And like, yeah, I'm, I'm what working I'm on person. it. I'm a person. What else, like, what else can I say? We've well, experienced it's like, a really like jarring version of that on the internet, mm -hmm. um, which we've yes. had to use that method of is it true or is it not going through that a lot because the amount of, of criticism, the amount can. of like shocking and horrifying comments and messages we have received about the most like wild. Deeply personal like either like deeply okay e either like wildly specific um physical things or yeah. deeply personal yeah attacks <laughs> on our character yeah like just wild things that really it's like you open up about like your mental health and, and then, then people <laughs> like flame you for it it's like okay yeah. So then we have to we have to be able to th that's how we still have a career is we had to be able to go oh yikes that one really hurt because that was kind of true <laughs> or like oh that really hurt because i really don't want to be that and i'm really insecure about that and someone like just pointed that out and i really don't like thinking about that or that really hurt because i'm pretty sure that's not true and i like actively try not to do that and they're acting like i am the thing that's the opposite of what i am mm -hmm. true that's when it really hurts otherwise it doesn't hurt if it's just like that's really insane and like totally like we're i don't know how to how to give an example of that but we've had a, 
very jarring version of that that I think has helped a lot to uh-huh. make us not scared. Well, when we're talking today about like being yourself and putting yourself out there, I posted a while ago like a big like question thing on Instagram that was like, what I asked like what message have you guys gotten from us the most over the years? What message? Do you feel like we say the most? And then the number one thing everyone said was that we like spread this message and helped them feel the most confident about being themselves, which that wasn't really planned. Yeah, we never say like, be yourself. I thought it was going to be like a self-worth thing, which that was like the second or third thing. But the number one thing people said was being authentic and being the real you or being yourself yeah. is the biggest message you get from us. And I was like, that's interesting because that was kind of an accident. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's something we've had to think about a lot because like, okay, so when we were in LA, every time like people would question a lot of things about us. The first thing that they would question all the time was if the like wholesome um, aspect to us was fake. So they would sit us down, which is kind of weird though, Ew, because that's so creepy. many people were minors. So that yeah, was I'm weird. Like, I'm 11. What do you think? Like I get saying that. <laughs> yeah. To, like I get the good girl act. You're 11. I get saying that to me. Well, they didn't say that. They no, said, I know. They would say, <laughs> so it, people literally said, I would, what I'm saying, multiple people said this. So is your guys like wholesome family friendly thing? That's like an act like, or is that like a real, th- like you're not really like that behind closed doors are you just, which that's a weird we were question just that's that's weird. weird especially for like a random man to be saying this that. was like, like let's tone it down this was bro. all pretty much all adults no no sometimes it was other influencers we met would say that well okay, because a yeah. lot of people no. were doing that no a lot of people do that yeah well, there's a lot of people who came who are older now who talk about their days and that they were doing their entire thing was like a fake thing they made up like just like yeah. one person not like a group but like one person whatever i've seen a lot of people say that recently and um that okay so having people do that to us a lot it really made me think about how i don't want us to be or i don't want myself to be like hey guys i'm this this and this when i'm not Mm. when i'm saying to a bunch of people because i don't want people to think i don't know i i was gonna say the wrong sense i don't know how to say it but it just made me think about that a lot right that i don't like that Mm -hmm. so that made me think a lot about like how we how you present yourself and like i don't know where i'm going with this i'm going somewhere but i don't know where i'm going okay (laughs) you wanting to be authentic yeah yes yeah as authentic as we could it's like our with our career it's a little different because everything is not like oh i'm gonna be authentic and show you guys every inch of my life and like me as an artist is not necessarily the same thing that i'm showing you as me as a mom me as a sister me as whatever so there's a little bit it's a little bit different but still the idea of questioning like what am i putting out there is this like an image or is this like real Mm -hmm. yeah let's go to the next one okay next one um give yourself permission to be as you are yes oh that was your thing you wanted okay so here's what I was thinking is it takes a lot of fortitude. Yes. But what I was saying is humility. Being yourself is very humbling, humbling. a lot of the Truly. time. Like a lot of the time. And the journey of accepting yourself for as you are, it doesn't mean like, oh, it like. Oh, like doing all the toxic things and just like being like, well, that's who I am. I can't change anything. It's just knowing like, okay, this is my toxic trait. I'm going to yeah. work on it. But like there was a, was another time in my life. Whoa. Sorry. Anyway, I actually love that song. Um, was another time. It's a good one. Um, what song is that? Reliant K. Um, oh, I love them. I love Reliant But it's like when you change in life, like and specifically I'm talking about like, when your body changes, like what as I've grown, I have grown sizes, as people love to tell me on the internet. And it's like, okay, I'm love almost you guys. 30. You're the best. I'm not gonna be the same size I was when I was 14. Yeah. But like, or even 20 or 21. Mm-hmm. So 
when I was, when you grow, you have to transition your wardrobe. Mm -hmm. And I was so attached to like the sizes that I used to be, even though I was like questioning if those are even small enough then. It's like, oh, I have to be a new size now. This is low key humiliating to have to Mm -hmm. change and like part with that. But the thing is, you have to have clothes that fit you. Not things you have to torture yourself with. Mm -hmm. And so it's like in accepting yourself, you have to accept with humility the things that go along with being a person. Mm -hmm. Like changing sizes, failing at things, like doing things differently than other people would. Because it's like in the words of Lauren, this is me and that's That's you. you. Like, (laughs) what is that? Lauren just says it all the time. And it's too real. It's like, okay, this is my size. I don't need to be anyone else's size. Mm -hmm. I can just make the decisions for myself, my size, my health, all the different things, my lifestyle, my career choice, like all these different things. I can just make them for myself because this is me and that's you. That's like a rebrand. If you're like, I don't want to be size blank because size blank equals this, you have you have to rebrand what that size mm-hmm. means to you yeah. or else you're just wearing clothes that don't fit and let me tell you how much better clothes look when they fit you yeah so they look a lot better, better. also sizes so don't much. mean anything a lot because better. they're all so different at every store That's so there true. is that but it's just but, like yeah but seriously when someone needs to size up in their pants and they do it looks it's so much it looks better, 10 better. Times better i'm just saying and it's like we have to let go of the things that aren't serving us that we've outgrown yeah. We can't leave them taunting us in our closets. We yeah, just can't. like literally True. outgrown. You have to accept things. Okay, and then what were you going to say for you got to hype yourself up? Oh, I love this oh. one. I told her she needs to put this one in. <laughs> I was just saying how, okay, when I was a child, I wore very unique outfits <laughs> as a homeschooler who's parents let her pick all of her clothes which was so and fetch. i was aware though that i was wearing weird outfits even though i liked them like and thought they, they were, were so normal. fashion forward but i was aware of the you know the trends you know what the other eight-year-olds were wearing <laughs> and i knew that that's not what they were wearing so the i trends. i like vividly remember so many times when i knew like okay hey, this outfit is very unique <laughs> And I'm literally like nine, ten years old, and I'm like going to play practice. And I have this vivid memory. I was wearing like my older brother's like baggy jeans, which no one was wearing that. It was okay. skinny jeans. Yeah. And like this like Hawaiian print tank top and this like hat. And it was just like, it was such a sleigh, but it was so <laughs> ahead of my time. And I knew none of the other kids were going to be wearing that. And I was like, okay, I need to hype myself up before going into play practice. Did of, you think like, this? Yes. How old I, were you? I was like, like eight. nine, eight, nine, ten, like going to church, whatever. I had this mentality wow, we are of not like, similar. not at I, all. <laughs> well, this is probably like, y- hearing like you talk about this type of stuff if that was when you started talking about it i don't know i got it from someone but like no i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna wear this outfit because i know that it's a sleigh and it's okay if the other kids aren't wearing them and if other girls judge me for what i'm wearing right now because i think it's cool and i like it and i think that you really have to do that like yes So I hopefully, thought that was so inspiring. Hopefully that means my kids will be like that. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I Tristan mean, that will was definitely me be as like, like an eight-year-old. She loves her <laughs> outfits. But yeah, yeah, it's like that awareness of like, yeah. I know that people might not receive so whatever it is. Like my personality, my weird jokes, my British accent, humor, my... my British yeah. accent. <laughs> my outfits whatever like the lms the i world. know some of the girls here are gonna judge me and be like what are you wearing that's not what the other eight-year-olds wear but i'm gonna do this anyway because i know it's a sleigh and this is me and this is what i want to wear and this is what i like and this is who i am like you yes. have to be like building yourself up like once you do like all those other steps that we talked about then it's like okay now it's time to fly Spread your yeah. wings and fly, but you can't be the Do one. Do the British accent. Yes, you can't be the one bullying yourself and putting yourself down. You have to hype yourself up of like, this is me. This is what I'm going to do. Some people might not receive it, and that's fine. 
I don't have to yeah. be friends with them. It's fine. Yeah. And we all bleed red. Yes. Like, truly, we all have shame. We all have insecurities. We're all on the same playing field here. So, guys, I hope that inspires you to be cringe. Yes. Or actually to rebrand. I don't know. I don't know it's a rebrand, but like to decide that being cringe isn't is a slay. Bad. And it doesn't mean people don't like you. I will tell you as a cringer myself, I cringe at everything all the time. You so guys say cringe at them every second. Literally. It doesn't mean that I don't like the person or even the thing that's happening, even though I'm cringing. Like yeah. it doesn't it have to be so detrimental for someone to cringe at you. It doesn't even mean that they don't like you. Sometimes it means they like you. Yeah, yeah, it does. I like people that make me cringe. Yeah. I don't know if I could say that, but some people do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Like, that's good. If you know in your heart it's a sleigh, you have to go for it. You do. If you know it's a sleigh, wait, think of a rhyme. If you know it's a sleigh, um, you'll be okay. Go and seize the day. Yay! <laughs> yes! If you know it's a sleigh, seize the day. Oh, if you know it's a sleigh, Seize the day. Amen. See, you were being cringe. It's too did good. Did you love it or did you love it? It's they love too it. good. <laughs> Welcome to Five Pops. Welcome to Five Perspectives today. What is our question? Is the question? Oh, the question is, I just saw, what? <laughs> to slay or not to slay, that is the question. The question is, what's your favorite thing about yourself? What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ariel asked that as a joke. Ariel suggested that as a I joke. I think it's wholesome. But I thought it was cute what's and wholesome. It's vulnerable. Yeah, what's your favorite thing about yourself? Be positive. Give us a slay. You know? All right, let's hear it. Okay, let's hear from our, our hear listeners from our first. Let's hear from our colleagues. Okay, first we have Lisa. Our correspondent. Oh, Lisa. I just answered this question already, and then I was like, that was a dumb answer. I kept saying, well, my ability to read people is my favorite thing then i'm like no i can't read people very well sometimes uh what about no can't do that either <laughs> okay my real favorite thing about myself off the top of my head i don't really know is my lifelong ability which has been stolen from me a little bit by having a kid but generally i am very able to like live in the moment mm, truly. and not get too lost in the future. So I guess I get lost in the past, but not not getting too lost in like the future or the How stress of things. And I do feel like in my current life situation, that has been very helpful mm. where I've mm. kind of had to use it like a superpower. Like, okay, just don't think about that. Don't worry about it. Just keep it simple. Honestly, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I've, um, I like to live, I like to live in the present, I focus know. on the now. Yes, I like to ride my bicycle. It's a kid's song. Oh. Love like that. to ride. Wow, Lisa. Okay, okay, okay I can see that. Kathy Sorry, Wren. Sorry, I to scroll Kathy to Wren the cards. next I wonder what she's going to say. Her Wait, when ability is to be yesterday. social oh, or something like it. that. Connect with people. Let's see. Help people. Empathize with people. I don't know. I, don't know. I think my favorite thing about myself is my, I don't know what the, how to phrase this, my outlook on life or oh. like <laughs> attitude, I guess. I don't know. I feel okay. like I can find the positive in situations and um, really? like look forward to things. Yeah. And I don't know, just yeah, like be excited okay. about life, I guess. I don't know what that quality is called, but optimism. I guess just being like yes. hopeful and excited Hope. and just, I don't hopeful. know, making life fun. And if there isn't something to look forward to, I'll think of something to like plan or make in my life. Um, like I'm all, even right now, like I'm laying in my bed postpartum with my newborn and I'm just like thinking about like, oh, I'm so excited for the things to come and the season ahead of us and like even little things Ooh. like we can all go on walks Girl. together or like sitting outside and eating a meal in the backyard like just cherishing small moments in life i know guys it's cheesy you're probably laughing lol no that's that one actually what I, I like about myself that was good Ooh. i like that cheesy. um who wants uh, to go first ladies I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll just say something um this sounds kind of weird, but I think <laughs> that I am so interesting, like to oh myself. My God. I am so interesting no, <laughs> to myself. Like I love it. I, like, 
like I do not think that I'm boring. Like I sit and slay, think la 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 la, and queen. it's interesting. Like I guess yeah, it's like that I like to spend time with myself and in my own mind. I don't think it's boring. I think there's like a lot to see. Yeah, there's a lot there. Like yeah, I I think I have an interesting thought process journey, and I'm always thinking. Amen. So. Like, if I was bored by myself, that would be really not fun. That's okay. true. I have so. two. <laughs> <laughs> What's I have your favorite thing about that yourself? That come to mind. Number oh, one, wow. my ability to uh, talk to people. <laughs> it comes yes, in handy. That's, that's a great, it's that's a a great, great quality. Great. I can literally talk to anyone. Um, and number two, my ability to coin catchphrases. <laughs> oh my gosh. Because <laughs> I'm just so good. I literally will coin a catchphrase and then I'll hear people say it and it just That's warms beautiful. my heart. Yeah. It's so fun. So yeah, those are my favorite things. <laughs> like, All like, right, lady. Let's hear something <laughs> good. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. Um, what's my favorite thing? Okay, how about just one yeah, thing? Yeah, okay, good, 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 okay, a good, <laughs> good thing is my ability, it's kind of not what you said, but it's kind of similar, but not. Um, my, no, it's not what you said. My ability to have fun. Oh, ooh, that's a good quality. Pre- all, in almost any situation or to make pretty much anything fun. Mm, that's not me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not me either. <laughs> um... That. that is a great quality. You are a fun facilitator. A good, you yeah. really are. I'm a fun facilitator, and I enjoy that. And it really comes in handy with my children. I can you make know, a game on the spot, anywhere, anytime. Any, I had to do this all the time as a, as a child, teenager especially, when I was watching these yahoos. I had to make games to keep them occupied all the time. Like, we were out in public. I had to make, like, a game. So that comes in handy with my children you know i don't know if i already told you this already i feel like i did but i'll just say it again for the cameras but i remember one time i was really like depressed and for some reason you were like driving me around to go somewhere it was here it was in your truck and oh, you were just so like fun even though like you know you're depressed too whatever <laughs> but we're all like, depressed. you just like put on fun music and you're like oh let's get snacks and it was so fun i was like wow christina is so fun and it made me like feel better that life wasn't so depressing so i was like wow i need to be like christina more and like try to like make things fun instead of making everything sad when i get I in the car that. oh yeah so, i don't like to listen to any kind of whatever in the car you know i only i only listen to fun music I'm kind of a problem too but well, you know who i kind of got this from old babysitter who was mm, like my second mother basically yeah i realized she did heavily she really influence fun. my personality mm, and I, oh, got, I can see that actually i was thinking about that the other day when she was messaging me we were messaging each other about the eclipse and now she's like oh you know when the last time you could see the moon what did she say you see the moon was Last night, I don't know she's saying all these dramatic <laughs> things that was funny, whatever. And okay. um, that's not what she. Okay, that's not exactly what she but said, it but it was not funny. funny but it yeah, was I funny. I believe you. I it it. was funny. <laughs> and I was like, you know, she really impacted my personality. It's kind of funny because I would hang out with her all the time in my formative years. Yeah, but yeah, I feel and like you just make around. things more fun, generally Thank speaking. You. That's how I felt about her. I'm like every time I hang out with her, it's always. It's always fun, no matter what we do. And she taught me how to, I was thinking about how I learned how to socialize from other people. <laughs> Catherine, I was thinking how Kath taught me how to be nice to people. <laughs> she's like, Christina, when, well, I don't know. No, she didn't say it to me. Just hearing her talk about other people. She's like, you know when people don't ask you a question? When, I wouldn't do that, but, you know, stuff like that. Or like yeah. Michael, but, but oh, I almost said her name. But our old babysitter, who was like my second mother, yeah, she, um, she we, I always go shopping with her. And she'd always like talk to all the people, whatever there. Scary. And I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I love that. Too, actually, I don't want to. Yeah, never mind. Too many details. Okay, I'll say yeah. it off offline. All right. What I was really gonna say because it's not kind of pointless, but love to Ooh, see it. Well, okay. That's end. what we love about ourselves. Yay! That's what we love about ourselves. <laughs> I was gonna say my ability to motivate people. It's a good yeah. one. That's a good one. That is That's a good one. Because every time I help someone, like, motivate them in some way, and then I see them actually do something about it, and then they're like, tell me about it or whatever, I'm like, wow, yeah. I did that. <laughs> Including my own children. Mm. Amen. 
Great. Oh, Barrett motivated me today when I was trying to use your freaking apple cutter. That was so hard. I think I did it wrong. He's like, sometimes it's hard and we keep trying. <gasps> yeah, that's what like, we say. I can't give up on this apple thing. <laughs> <laughs> you said that? Yes. We have a bunch of catchphrases. I say, Cute. Barrett, when things are hard, we, and then he says, keep trying. Yeah, Cute. I was like, really trying. He's like, you need to put your head down and push. I was like, okay. <laughs> I taught Barrett. Okay, Barrett forces me to run. So I only run when we're he on does. the way back from the house when I'm and pushing the stroller. So I'm like, when we're in the very end, I will run. <laughs> and then I taught him that he has to encourage me the whole time. So the whole time he yells, you can do it, mommy. Great job, mommy. You're so strong. He yells stuff at me the whole time. I need a video of that. That's, That's so funny. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. the end. We have one more thing, which is you. Oh my gosh. Sister Spotlight. But Ready? You don't have to. You do don't it. have to if you don't we want have to do it get today. real, Christina. If you don't want to get real, you don't You've have to. You've gotten pretty real but I today. I couldn't think of a topic. That's okay. We talked about yeah, a lot. Yeah, we talked about a lot. TBH, I'm really tired. Yeah, I think that's okay. I mean, you got real many times this in this episode. This is just authentic life. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we're, like, tired. tired. Yeah. I was thinking of the words of Ordinary Girl by, by Hannah Montana. Yeah, sometimes I'm lazy, I, I get bored, bored. I get scared, I feel ignored. ignored. I get I, happy, you know, feel silly. I I'm choke just, on my own words. I'm just an ordinary girl, you know? That's it. That's, that's, it. that's Get Real with Christina. Is everyone listen to Ordinary Girl and nobody's heard by Hannah Montana? Yeah, so let's skip Get that's Real with Christina her message. today. Sorry, guys. That's your homework okay. for our Get Real with Christina. It's listen to I'm Nobody's Perfect. Okay. That's your homework. All right. Well, catch you on the flip. Catch See you ya. on the flip. Bye. 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 You've been listening to the Cimarelli podcast. Follow Cimarelli on Spotify and subscribe on YouTube. You can also find Cimarelli on Facebook and Instagram.